The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials flat. NASDAQ is up 33 s and is up six and a half. Gold contract down fourteen dollars, trading at twelve seventy an ounce. We have a silver contract down ten cents, fourteen dollars fifty four cents an ounce. Light sweet crude down a buck sixty six, sixty one dollars ninety three cents. They're hammering the the market. Poof, right? Yeah. Big big time negative action. Notes and bonds, uh, ten year note down five ticks, trading one twenty three thirteen. Thirty year off two at one forty seven seventeen. You got king dollar up one hundred ticks at ninety seven five ten. The euro is at one eleven eighty five. The yen's trading at one eleven fifty three. The pound is at one thirty to one U S dollar. We got uh, Elon Musk, uh, Tesla. He's coming back to the mo money, two billion dollars. Put it in the coffers. Another, another two billion. They better get some cash, man. If their cash flow negative on quarterly basis, well, losing they money. It. They get the stock. The stock popped to 245. You're at 239, and yep. they are burning cash, baby. Hey, they're taking it in too from all those investors and, oh, and this, financiers. This, there's, there's no doubt. He no. wasn't supposed to go get more money though, but he did. Hey, when do you get money, right? Not exactly when you might need it. As in, he better not wait. And smartly so, I'd say they raise some money when they're not in dire need, at least. Yeah. Oh, that's no doubt. That's six months away. No, I joke. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I know, man. It's pretty amazing. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hicks, TD Ameritrade. Think or swim as they do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, you want to understand option, option strategies, future. Great program. 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Real easy to get. No matter where you are driving, this great country of ours right now, all you have to do is go to YouTube, hit TFNN, get it right on your phone, folks. Great way to go. Kevin Hicks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. How you guys doing? Good morning, doing Kevin. Good, man. I mean, there's so much action out here, Kevin. It just depends. You know, I, I know, you know, we were talking about even last Thursday that an action-packed week, but I mean, one after the other. I woke up this morning, I see Carney from the Bank of England. Right. Live yeah. press conference, start right. off the day. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, last night we had uh, action in a big way and cool. uh, jobs number tomorrow. Man. So. Yeah, pretty amazing trade today, though, in Number one, crude oil, Oof. having a pretty weak day, and then gold. Yeah. You yes. know, with, with, with really a dollar that's up, you know, it's up, but it's up, it's not up very, very big, but man, they are hitting gold hard here today. Yeah, they are. There, there's no doubt about it. They start, they hit it yesterday, they hit it again this morning. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, we'll see where this shakes out. It just went down and tested that uh, swing point from last week. The thing that's intriguing, too, Kevin, is that, you know, Powell's saying, hey, listen, there's no reason to go up. There's no reason to go down, you know. And right. it's like, okay, well, the Fed fund future is still over 50% for next September. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, you know, for a cut, I, you know for a cut. I, it, it's real easy. I've been saying all along that I think a Fed rate cut for this year is absurd, and I don't see it happening. And, uh, and I think Joe Powell can give you a hint that he doesn't either. Yesterday, yes. When he said this low uh, inflation environment, he, used to, he never have I seen someone get more weight out of one word. He went from patient to transient in terms of how he described uh, low inflation. So now I yes. think the rest of the market took that as, you know, I don't think rates are going down. Let's put it that way. Any anytime soon, they, he may stay stable. He may raise if something happens, but I don't think the, I don't think rates are going down anytime soon. I think that's what the market took from that. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. there's no there's no doubt, and w it would seem, I mean, you know, when we do look overseas, you know, it seems like we have a lot higher rates than overseas. But the reality is, is that okay? Are you really going to put that much gasoline on an economy that is still going forward? Sure. You know, so yeah. that, 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 that's that. exactly right. And although his mandate is not GDP. His mandate is inflation and unemployment, right. and both of those are sitting at pretty low levels right now. Yep. I mean, even with a 3.2 GDP print, you have to say that the inflation 
aspect of that number was very low. The income and outlays number was very low. That being said, tomorrow brings another day, and tomorrow brings another big, massive data point for us to judge some inflation on, and that is non-farm payrolls, unemployment, and the wages number that will get in that number. Yeah, there's no, and you know, it seems to me, Kevin, that the when you really look at inflation, deflation, between our technology and everyone getting smarter every day, I think deflation is going to be with us for a while, and a lot of things that we, not that we don't need, but they, you know, they can keep making these less expensive, less expensive, less expensive. It seems. You know what I'm saying? And so I think there's still more leeway there. Um, you know, to bring prices low, and I think that's what the, all these central banks are facing, you know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, you know, the spread on all the clothes that we're buying is still 200%. It's like, really? Right. You know? It's like, okay, Amazon's already showed they don't need 200%, so those other stores come down, just sure. keep it the same, just inch down a little. It doesn't have to be a lot, but, you know, and as one of the Tigers is saying, though, they, they're absolutely right. That's the stuff, you know, clothes and stuff, but food... Is definitely have inflation. Yeah, you know, and healthcare. Healthcare is inflation. There's big numbers. When, yeah, uh, so that's that's the other side of it. That you know, you know, bottom line is that that's what the fight's about. Meaning, uh, inflation, deflation. But it seems like let's long... face it, Tom. What does Amazon go after? What what is red meat for Amazon in terms of their their business model? If you are a middleman, or if you are anything having a high margin business, they're coming for you. They're coming One for you. One way or another. That's it. Right? Yeah. And it's just a matter of when. Yeah. Like right right now, the rumors about them getting into more of the trucking and the freight part of their business, and it hit all the carriers uh, of this week. Guess what? Yeah, those are margins, not. right? And those are margins that directly affect their business and their profitability. It seems such an obvious thing for them to go after. Uh, it, there's no doubt. And it's right up their alley. I mean, that's, that's the other side of it. Because imagine, you know, you're, you're opening a business – that you've already been paying someone else so much money for anyway. It's like, okay, I, I, I like this deal. It seems like I see those Amazon small delivery style van, minivan trucks everywhere now, more. much yeah. more often. They're popping up more and more, Tommy. That's a very good point. You, you know, FedEx and UPS used to you know, run through my neighborhood, and they still do, but you're starting to see that third truck now. It That's used to be, truck. yeah, it used to be the, the mail trucks, the U.S. Postal Service, full of Amazon boxes, yeah. and now more often I see I, that Amazon truck I, everywhere in the neighborhood. When they they started that deal, right, I they like, would fund I, those. Companies. I like what they look like, too. No, they're, they're yeah. beautiful cars. Aren't they Mercedes, I think? I don't know. I think they, they are. They're I think they're Mercedes cars. vans. Um, ah, yeah. Let's say, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know why, but I like those vans they're driving around in. They're nice vehicles, though, you're right. You know, they're nice vehicles vehicles and they are popping up they are you know? so that's they're so cutting out everybody cut them out get them out it's a brave new world There's speaking no of bezos so, he just, well, he just well, launched a well, rocket this thing, morning guys, sorry go ahead Kevin. for 180 180 000 non-farm payroll tomorrow okay. morning, right think about this the private payroll part of that number that they're looking for tomorrow for your viewers is 173 thousand. wow the bottom line is this how, what is that number going to be if the ADP payrolls were 275,000, 100,000 more than expected? I'm, that's what I'm going to watch for tomorrow morning. It's a big nice. one. It's a big one. Folks, Kevin, right, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 14. Nasdaq's up 41. S&Ps are up eight and a half. Let's go take a look at Microsoft for one of the tigresses uh, in the den here. So you get Microsoft. Um, that came down hard yesterday. What happened, man? Yeah, I mean it was it, everything. I mean I, it was really it's, surprising though. I, uh, know, yeah, uh, I always say the Nasdaq. I just think I covered in the update. Nasdaq 100. I think it came down 120 or 140 okay. points. So, so yeah. and this was a big part of it. But oh, it but was? there was, uh, was right on that 2:30 press conference with Powell. Yeah. So. This, let's put this on a weekly. Okay, so. I think I did this before. So this is, okay, it's not an ABC down because you get volume on the way down versus on the way back up. You broke top side. Uh, this looks to me, let me get 120. So you say it's, a, you say it's not an ABC it's down the, because it doesn't, do you mean it's not, up? Not, not, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. It's not an ABC up, yeah. Because there's looking, volume on the way an, down. It, yeah, okay. it's a nice break top side, but you can see there's too much volume on the way down here on that retracement. What is that day or that week? What is that week with the big volume spike? That's October. No, December, no, no uh, December 24th, it would be. Yeah. 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 Christmas Eve, of yeah. course. So yeah. I would say that you know, Microsoft's going to make its way back there, which it's not the end of the world because guess what? It's, it's up so tremendously. It's like... They're an, they're an incredible company. They've been firing on all cylinders for five, six years. Look at that. Is that 2000, yeah, 2009, $14. Yeah. Plus, plus, what's the dividend? Um, oh, it's only 1.4, but still 1.4. Yeah. yeah. With that Not bad getting a dividend as your stock just goes through the moon, right? <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah. That's seriously. Let's go take a look. Uh, oh, here, we'll go to natural gas. Um, Let's take a look. So it's Thursday. Um... Pull this over where it's about 10:20. We get the natural gas numbers in 10 minutes. Jumping around, natural gas. So we'll start it off with the 11 a.m.s. We're looking at the what contract are we on? June contract. Natural gas right now trading at basically 259, 258.9. So you're going to have exposure for the 11 a.m.s at 260, which is not bad. You're about a penny to the downside. I'm going to jump real quick and just see how these line up before we jump into each one. So the noon expirations. Are going to have 260 as well, and they're all going to have 260 as these get set. Um, I'm just going to close some of these as I set this up. 
So we were just up at 262 overnight. We're trading at about 259. Your bullish spread, gonna be slightly out of the money. That one's gonna be all premium, 12 bucks. The bearish spread, what am I looking at here? Okay, I'm starting with the 230s. These are the biggest ones. Um, 260 down to 220. And I realized when I put this up, I was like, wait a second, why is that 12 pennies yeah, above right, the, I thought right. I was looking at the 11 AMs. That'd be a lot of premium for, but nonetheless, so you're looking at about $34 represents three and, a half pennies. three and a half pennies away from 260 right and you got about a penny head start to the downside now that's going to be the most expensive option because that's right. till 230 and that's 40 cents is your spread i believe these smaller ones are going to be 20 cents when you get down to the noon so we'll jump to the noon yes and they have 20 cents realistically natural gas moving more than 20 cents not likely but you'd still have that option so here's your bullish spread and you can see right away the difference in the market right in terms of you're trading at 259, yeah. it's going to cost you seven dollars to get in until noon. It's going to cost you 12 to get in until 2:30. All right. So there's your bullish, and you pull up the bearish. So you're looking at 20, 23, 24, 2.3, 2.4 yeah. pennies till noon, and we'll pull it up until 11 a.m. Oh, good. That was the noon one. Okay. That was I the see. noon one. Yeah, yep. Right. I'm going down from I, high I, I, now that this still time. still kind of close. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So the noon one, five, five yeah. for the bullish, which is out of the money. And you're looking at about 17, so 22. So really not that big of a difference Ooh, between no. 11 and 12, right? Only half a penny. Yeah, barely, right? right. Um, and, you know, sometimes we look at both sides, man, if you really expected a pop and you expected it quick, not a bad trade getting in at five, seven dollars. And your break even becomes just above 260. And right. You're trading at 259. You're getting inventories. You were just trading without even news at 259, um, at 260, 261 as of an hour ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see with that number. Let's see. So uh... quite a surprise build from oil yesterday, Ooh. and oil continuing downward from from that action. And G. Let's see. That's your guess. I think we're looking at June, all the way on the bottom. June. Okay, thank you. So, look at that. Huh? Look at that, that fired down there, didn't it? It sure did. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's too bad. You know, go ahead. Wait. I was going to say we missed the whisper number again. I was going to yeah, pull it up. We right. had 10 minutes. We'll have to start yeah, getting no, ahead of that. I'd say it's downtown. Downtown would have been yeah. right yesterday. You said the same thing about oil, man. Oh, that was yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one, and it took a few minutes. But yeah. uh, let's pull up. I want to hear. I want to see what they're going to say. The good thing, um, natural gas. What are they looking for? They're looking for a whisper between 115 and 160. That's a build, right? Yes, a build. That's a small build. Yeah. Yeah. So almost flat, yeah. right? Basically, and uh, to put it in context, yesterday the oil number—I think they were looking for like 1.7 million. Okay. And I, so median analyst was 1.7. I think Bloomberg survey saw something. It was like more like four. Number came in almost 10, regardless. Yeah, I know. Um, quite a number. Monster number. Yeah. Monster number, no doubt about that. Can we um, Under Armour? Let's take a yes. peek. We were going over that at the break. They had some earnings this morning. Looks like they're trimming their line. That's Cut. quite a trim. Poof, and good for them, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta trim some stuff that ain't working, and they weren't working for a while. Um, so here we go. Earnings amounted to five cents a share under Under Armour set, under Armour set on Thursday, compared with an estimate of break-even, and sales were 1.2 billion, slightly gained from a year earlier of 1.8 part we found interesting, right? They yeah. wrote down a large chunk of inventory, reworked its supply chain, and eliminated about 40% of its products to focus on high, highest selling lines. Gross margins expanded for the third consecutive quarter so that they're becoming more efficient, right? That's working in terms of their selling more items at full price. Yeah. Um, and inventory also declined dramatically in line with the founder's strategy to create a more streamlined operation. They have 875 million in inventory, lowest level in three years. Um, and so the focus for Under Armour now shifts to growth later in the year. So trim it down, right? Get everything working, and then probably ramp up those product lines that are doing well. It right. seems like the market likes that, especially coming in. You're supposed to be break even. You're making money. Oh. Your sales are up. 
ahead of expectation. And you get a turn like that, you, you know, it's, it's a it's a big deal. So so here's you know we were looking at the inventory. Here's interesting. Okay, so this is uh, their inventories, so streamlined, so decreasing inventories. They were up above one point. Looks like about 1.3 billion probably right. at the beginning of last year. So even in the last four quarters, they've come down pretty substantially. Yeah. Look at that. Huh? Yeah. They. Th you see it often, right? A company, when they're really firing all, on all cylinders, you can just expand a little bit too quickly. Right. Um, the first thing that came to mind was Starbucks, right? In terms of they're everywhere, and then they're going to come in, close down stores, and trim yeah. it up. And Pretty amazing. Yeah. The thing that's amazing in the clothing companies is that, like, something could be worth, you know, a dollar, ten dollars, whatever it is, and all of a sudden, people's chase change, and all of a sudden, it's worth nothing. It's like, yes. oh, my God. Style, fashion, you better keep <laughs> up, man. man. And that's just to pull it up, because I don't think we had touched on the actual yeah. performance. So it's up on 7%, man. It was up, uh, it's quite a move, 7% on that, that chart. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are going to be coming right back. We'll have those gas numbers for you. And, of course, uh, market numbers. Dow right now, up 16. Now it's like up 37. S&P's up 8.5. Come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so, EIA, natural gas, stockpiles. Rising, 123 billion cubic feet. Right estimate had been about 115, okay. so that is bringing the total inventories to 1.46 trillion cubic feet. To see how that's hitting the market, we'll pull up the chart, and uh, bigger 
supply than you'd expect, right. more supply in the market, lower prices. You just saw natural gas drop from about 259, where we were comparing when that was setting up, to yeah. about 257, 8, 258. Um, still, most of those setting up, right? We're looking for 23, 25, like two and a half pennies right. for the noon, maybe three and a half pennies if you go until 230. So um, we're at about two and a half pennies right now. So we'll see, but a little bit of a build. Natural gas, seems to be plenty of it around. Um, <laughs> Seriously, man. And I was just reading, so this was uh, ahead of the news coming yes. out, right? Saying that that's why we saw futures kind of pull back a little bit even leading into it. The government report shows the biggest ever stockpile gain for that time of year, easing concerns that's a, that a supply crunch will emerge. Inventory still 30% below normal for this time of the year, but muted demand and uh, booming shale production are helping to accelerate weekly increases in stored supply. And what do we do? We beat again, right? So I would say right. uh, you and might see that price come down. And you know, the, the yearly inventories have been below medium for a long period yeah, of time right you know i mean I, this rap yes. has been going on for like five years it's like yes. okay and it's probably because there's so much shale that they can get as much gas they want as quick as they want i guess, I guess they want. right yeah right yeah, yeah. eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight let's go take a look at some of these uh higher volume equities um so let's see what we got out here. You got Qualcomm. They come out with numbers. We'll, we'll go over there. It's interesting. Qualcomm was trading down five dollars last okay. night. Okay. And now it's up three. Actually, I saw they actually put what, a number on. Right go there. for it. They yeah. put a number on that Apple settlement, right? I think I saw at least four point five billion. Okay. Um, which was what they kind of expected. But man, I said to you yesterday, right? Man, it is up so much even since it jumped that day. It has just. And I don't even want to say trickled up because it's not even, it it's just kept going up every right. single day. So, so what you have here, folks, is that the day of the announcement, right, we started off at 57, ended up at 71. Yep. Then it gapped the next day to 82. Yep. And now I heard 89. Yeah, I mean, think about it. That day, it went from 57 to 71 to, and that in itself is amazing. And it just went from 71, it just went up at almost another 30% from right. where it closed that day. And there it is. Yeah, 4.7, right. Look at that. That's a nice little payday. Say, why don't you pay us all those licensing fees that you never wanted to, and now uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll look for that check of $4.5 billion. To catch up. So yeah. Apple's will pay Qualcomm $4.5 to $4.7 to catch up on licensing fees accrued during the two-year legal battle. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, now they, that, that's the deal they made on that big run, right. but they hadn't quite announced, and they thought it would be billions um, because... Uh, Qualcomm made mention, I think, of how much it would affect their earnings per sale or okay, per share yeah. or something. That it was going to be substantial. Uh, I guess less than the seven billion Qualcomm claimed Apple owed. That was probably during those negotiations because yeah. that number wasn't thrown around um, when they made that deal. So yeah, they reached that settlement April 16th, and uh, in addition to that payment, the companies negotiated a multi-year agreement. Uh, for Qualcomm to sell chips and license it te its technology to Apple for royalty payments. And that's what basically people said is, hey, Apple made a decision that they need Qualcomm. You know, they need Qualcomm to be in the game. Yeah. And uh, they might have thought they could have succeeded. But guess what? If you win and you can't do business with them because that's you've made enemies, then you've actually lost. No, big time. Yeah. Big time. And, uh, you know, hey, can you, why don't you bring Qualcomm up in the TD? Sure. Because uh, I I, th I think this was down five bucks last night. It was for the overnight. Minutes. Oh, yeah. look at that! Yeah. There you go, man. Isn't that wild? Sometimes it takes a little while to digest that information, right? Right. right. Now, I love how they show this on the TD Ameritrade platform. Yeah. There's your earnings number. Yeah. Earnings. Okay. There's where the conference call starts. Look at that. Which, which, yeah. uh, it gave it a little run and looks like it lost a little bit of steam. But I wonder something was said on that conference call because right. even then it went from 82 up to 85. It waned a bit overnight, and then once the traders woke up in the U.S. at 4.35 in the morning, the whole, the whole time, the whole time, man, because it was already at 87 by the time of the open. Sometimes you see it wait till the open, yeah. right? But no, they figured out pre-market. No, no. Good news. Let's put the rest of these. Let's see. That's got to be a nice trade, being in QCOM at 57, Ooh. and you're sitting at 90 today. Seriously, man. You get uh, Caesars Entertainment. That's up 35 cents. Okay. So Square's getting hit. That's down five and a half dollars. 67 dollars 82 cents. Can we jump into that? I'm just yeah. curious on the fundamental. Whoops, I didn't want serious. Hold on. What they? Uh, I, I I saw. Yeah, Street Wonders. What is the Street Wondering? Uh, 
less impressive forecast, as usual the case, right? So they climbed 40% from a December low. Let's see if they got actually what's going on here. Square's softer forecast as outperformance in the subscription and services segment is starting to be overshadowed by weaker core transaction revenue and margins. Uh, the second is decelerating growth in the company's gross payment volume. I mean, that's, that's the bread and butter, right? Well, How much a, are you processing? Number. Raises yeah. questions regarding Square's ability to continue to meaningfully outpace the market in a friendly, competitive merchant acquiring space. Yeah. So uh, these are just different analysts. That's yes, one of them. Right. But, but They're probably saying, that, okay, how many more small stores are there? Not necessarily small stores, but Square, that's what they attacked that so greatly. And so many people got it so quick. Do you sure, know what I mean? Because right. it was such an easy thing to do. They were the one of the first ones that didn't have to jump through hoops to take credit cards. Yes, right. Yeah. Very simple. Uh, Very, you could just tie it to your computer. And right. then they've gone beyond that for sure now, but that's maybe where it's not as easy to grow. And, you don't have a niche. If you're just coming into a regular business with a regular terminal, then why am I not going with a First Data and their millions? I oh, have friends, yeah. like, you know. You know, I mean, just any other competitive credit card processing business. Right. No, there's no, there's no doubt about that. I and mean, what's happening in the credit card business also is I've been getting solicitations about uh, it wouldn't work as much for TFNN, but let's say that you have a. Uh, a business that you have inventory, right? Okay. Well, what they're doing is that they, the credit card company is saying, hey, listen, at no cost, no extra cost, you can put this on with your inventory, and we're going to match this up for you on a continual basis. Okay. And it's sure. like, it makes sense. Oh, you know for what I mean? sure. It's like, okay, if you're using, you know, yeah. basically you, an Excel and you're using some kind of a, you know, inventory software. Yes. Um, that, oh, that, definitely. That's something that's pretty cool. Some you'd, synergy you'd, there, you'd right? You know every day, okay, yep. this many is out, yep. I got to order this many, yep. I, I can see that, you know. Oh, definitely. You, know. you get some good AI in there telling right. you what's, what's going on. No, it's the you next step. Get the Elon day. Musk in there telling you what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let, let's, I, I'm, I'm curious, what's the, because the, the two billion is stock and debt. So let's right. see what, yeah. they, what they got here. And Elon's going to be purchasing a, a ten million. Port. Yeah, that's nothing. Ten million shares, I believe, though. Right? Oh, I thought it was just ten million dollars. Maybe it is. Well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, raising two billion through debt and stock offering. Uh, this is great. After Elon overestimated the ability to generate for the Tesla to generate yeah. cash, so well, they there it is right there. Yeah. Where? Uh, okay, yeah. so they're going to sell one point three five billion in convertible notes and about six hundred and fifty million in shares. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We view this as a net positive. One of the analysts. Where are we going? Did you see where? No, that's the one that's up there. That's what we know. Uh, oh. 1.3 million. Sorry. Billion yes. Convertible. Yeah, I was getting down. I thought you saw Musk. It's right at the bottom. So, yeah. no, you're right. Participate in the offering by his body is 10 million in stock. Well, yeah. Why, why even mention that? Um, most of the offering will come from convertible bonds due in 2024. We'll, we'll finish it up when we come yeah, back. Yeah, good. Stay right there, folks. Tell me I'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Nasdaq's up 30, S&Ps are up five and a half, and we're talking with, uh, talking about Tesla here, their $2 billion raise. Yeah, so I guess it puts them much more in line with standard ratios in terms of a 15% cash to sales, historically level among traditional auto manufacturers and suppliers. Um, did you see the number of shares? Where were you seeing that? Up above. Tesla's indicating interest in buying. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I said that 10 million. There isn't 2 billion. That's a half a percent of the total rates. Right, um, right. You know, kudos for, for Musk being the PR man he is and getting that in there. Um, Tesla's planning as much as $2.5 billion in capital expenditures this year as it develops new vehicles, including that Model Y crossover. They got the semi-truck and the Roadster sports car. It's also building a battery and vehicle factory near Shanghai yeah. um, to produce those Model 3s. And that's where the, the, the one, uh, what's happening in the Shanghai deal in, uh, between Tesla and Panasonic, it's like they're saying that Panasonic is pulling back too because they're kind of flipped out that he's getting a, a Chinese partner now too. Okay. And it's like, okay. you know, it's just, you know, the, okay. like, yeah. It's a lot of geopolitics. What came oh, yeah. to my head when you said this, don't they have to have a Chinese partner to be doing that? I feel like, you I, know, and I, I'm sure that. Yeah, they do. Right. They do. How big of a partner, right, is yeah, Panasonic. Exactly. Or, but exactly. that's a that's a massaging game that Elon's probably playing as in terms oh, yeah. of. Uh, Putting one off against the other. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. So when you, when you look at these, he did $4.5 last quarter. He's looking to do 6.2 this quarter. They get some big aspirations in those numbers, right? Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, um, that's a big jump. It is a big jump. You know, you and and, and this, then, hey, look at how much this went down. Well, that and 7.2 the prior quarter. Yeah. And that's when the credit that got was, cut in half. That was the last quarter of last year, so right. good until December 31st. Right. Um, so it would make sense that your biggest opportunity is up until December 31st. Yeah. Your worst day of sales ever is going to be January 1st. Oh, yeah. Um, I Zero. wonder. Yeah, right? I mean, who right. would ever walk in when they tell you the credit just expired 12 hours ago? Right. Um, maybe there was somebody, but you can see to the tune yeah. of that drop off. But you'll still, I don't know. We'll see. As in, as in, it still kind of stings if you're buying it on April 1st and oh, you yeah. just could have gotten it. So we'll see if they can really bounce back because that's. Uh, you still feel like you lost out on almost four thousand dollars opportunity just because you waited a few months. Big time. Yeah. Inside the Dow Industrials, let's take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. So point wise, you get the Home Depot putting eleven points in, Apple putting seven, Merck putting six, taken away from it, Disney minus fifteen, Cat minus twelve. United Technologies minus seven. Pretty muted, right? It, yeah. It's not often that there's not one stock, at least on one side of the market, 
putting more than 15 points into sure. it, and you kind of just have a bunch of small little yeah. action, which is why the Dow hasn't moved that much. And NDX, we got uh, a little bit of a different story. Yeah, you got uh, <laughs> Advanced Micro up six percent, Qualcomm up three, Skyworks up three, and Tesla up three. Yeah. Taken away from it, uh, Kraft Heinz. We'll go oh. back to that. Went down 2.7. Fox is off 2.8. Vertex is down 2. Point, you know, one point. Foa. Let me just do this. Kraft Heinz. These guys. I don't even know how they stay in business with all the you know ketchup processed friend? food they're you selling. Like ketchup. Uh, Let's take a look. This, yeah, this chart's a mess, as I thought right. it was. Whoa. Where do you see that? <laughs> so this is down from 97 to 32. And even since, right, since uh, the beginning of March, that, that initial huge fall off um, yeah. when they came out. Yeah. That's, yeah. So what do you got there? What's he got? They're claiming they're still growing. See that? I mean... Uh, yeah, Six. it's almost so marginal, right? I mean, you right. could almost say that there's like just some variance built into the basically stagnant from 26.5, 26.2, 26.3, 25.9, right. 26.1. Yeah, You're so just kind of that, oscillating that, around. And that number underneath must be right. That's what I was looking at there. You know, ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's, an, there's an 18 number underneath there, folks. And there's no way that if you look at if you look at the revenue right here. Yeah. You know, the revenue I is do, right? basically down versus up. In this That's scenario. a little accounting magic to get a, a three-year growth rate of 18%. <laughs> And uh, yeah. show me your revenue numbers. Ah, Seriously. We'll, we'll just keep those in the back pocket. Yeah, <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, they just, uh, I guess they didn't even come up with numbers. They're just selling off, right? Yeah, let's see, yeah. As its sector declined, I guess, so, so they get some problems maybe in the processed food. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a business I would not want to be in right now. Let's check back on natural gas. Oh. Where are we going to be? Up two fifty six eight, so about three point two pennies now under that level, right? Um, anytime it would have been a nice setup if you're bearish, you have a one penny head start to the downside, yeah. right? You get a surprise build over what they're estimating, so that's nice when you get you know that in your direction. And it seems like as uh, that article mentioned when we pulled it up, that supply supply worries um, shouldn't be worried anymore. It no, seems no like doubt. we're going to have plenty of supply. Yeah. And watch this. We go over to the oil. This is going to be wild. Do we got plenty of oil, too? And, you know, what, what you want to pay attention to here, folks, is that this S&P has been trading with oil for a long period of time. Oh, definitely. You know? And just, oil just look breaks. at December 24th, and exactly. this is like a identical. Right. I agree, it's, it's, right? And, you know, and, and oil broke first. I mean, oil, you know, broke. Yep. The first time it broke was last week. You know, yep. that's when we went from uh, 65 to 62. You did a little bounce, you know, bottom line, you know. Oh, yeah, you better pay attention if, yeah. uh, because they are trading in tantum. Yeah. I mean, for right. sure. I mean, this is, I, I, you know, I just love doing this because it's like, man, I was looking at it. it it's so direct. It uh, is. I'll just put this back for one year so you can see the, the correlation in between oil and I'll do it one year and a weekly because you can see how clean this is. And then I'm going to compare it here we go. to the cash S&P. So what you're looking at here, you're looking at the cash oil market, the continuous contract, yes. with the cash S&P. <laughs> it's like, wow. Totally. You know. If one thing, it's just that uh, oil should be at $75, I guess. Yeah. It didn't quite keep up no, on the that, acceleration. No, but, I, yeah. I, I know. I, yeah. Believe me, when I was looking at yeah. that, it was the same type of deal. I said, okay, man. Yeah. And if you go to the XLE, uh, you'll see that the... Uh, maybe you can, maybe we no. can compare the XLE. Oh, can you we, can. You can, can we try and you add can. a third one, right? Uh, no, compare to... We, we, let's do it... Uh, uh, I was hoping they just have a drop-down list of... Uh, there, yeah. There's just two. I'm sure we can figure out a way, but that's all right. Okay, go well, ahead, you know, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll go like, uh, I'm going to do oil. See how... Well, that would make CL1. sense. CL1. It would make sense that well, I could do the S and P, right? And, and then I'll what do you do, want to do? Compare them again? Yeah. So I should do I should do the S P X. Okay. And then I'll put the X L E. And put that on the one year weekly you wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, right. So that's one year. Now I'll compare that to the X L E. Cool. X L E. Nope. You don't want it there, right? Nope. Um, I don't know where was You're it. You're not in the. Oh. Okay. There you go. X L E. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. It's similar. Similar. And it, what you have here, this is what this and see this is where I think we're at right now. Oil is going first. You can see the sure. XLE is going first. So you know. Yeah. And you know when you start putting that together, folks, with 
the transports, the transports tested its high, failed. You know, you're up 138 today, but you know, last week we did we did the test. SMHs also tested its high, failed. That's up today. But in both cases, both of those have tested the high, failed on price and volume. You get the big dogs that are already out. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by sign up today since 1984 basil chapman has been using the chapman wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion while originally hand drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply later basil found that computer software which included the standard market technical indicators enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls thus was born the chapman wave sequence using the chapman wave methodology along with other indicators basil chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call basil's daily trading newsletter by visiting the front page of tfnn.com cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing get your two-week free trial to basil's newsletter the opening call today by visiting tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is down, uh, oh, it just got hit, down 50, and yeah. NASDAQ's up 12, S&P's a flat. And talk about someone getting hit. Uh, this is sad. Yeah, it, well, yeah, definitely. So Kentucky yeah. Derby this weekend, yep. man, it sneaks up. I can't believe it. Right. Uh, unfortunately, you had the horse favorite yesterday getting scratched, Omaha Beach. I think it was a, as high as a four-to-one favorite. Yeah. Um, they had, I think, a lung problem, something to do with being sick. Uh, and so the story comes out that Omaha Beach's breeding rights were sold for $22 million one day before the horse got scratched. That's not going to be the end of the story. I wonder how that's going to play right. out. I, I feel like, just like if there's a trade in the NHL, the NFL, that yeah. they the players have to go through a physical. I imagine if you sell a horse, but you know what? It might be different because, nah, I was going to say because it's not like they're racing. You're buying just their breeding rights, right? So you don't get to inspect their knee or something like that if you're buying their breeding rights, really. I don't know. Oh, but you should be able to make sure that they're going to live long enough 
to be able to breed. So yeah. I imagine there's definitely. Um, so a few deals on premium horses are made before their third year with bonuses if they win. Others are consummated in between the Triple Crown races, uh, while some don't get locked, locked up until after the Belmont. And I okay. imagine you're just, you know, do you want to take your equity right now or do you want to let, let it run, let, right? As let, in, you and, and, you know, the risk is yeah. what, what would happen there. And then some, like last year, I think with Justify, they sold those rights and that... That guy made out that bought the right stuff. Well, look at so it's usually owners of the prohibitive favorites, Omaha Beach being the morning line favorite, yeah. four to one, roll the dice and try and win the derby um, first. And I love this, how, how innocent. But for whatever reason, <laughs> they decided to do the opposite and then they scratched the horse. Well, I, I can think of one reason. Can you think of one reason? Yeah. Because they were going to scratch the horse. Yeah. I knew. So oh we'll see what my happens. God. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We have a fast market coming up next. Then I'm in Mr. Basil Chapman, the Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get them, folks.